that, right? We, we also want you to think about what kinds of variables do you encounter in, in, in your analysis, right? And health-related variables, much, much of the variables that you encounter in life, not even just health-related, they are often either that continuous, discrete, or categorical. There are other types. You know, there's visual, like all these graphic pictures and all that that are coming into play as we think about machine learning and all that. But for the purpose of much statistics and epidemiologic data, epidemiologic analysis, we're often thinking about the variables in three forms, right? It's either continuous, discrete, or categorical. If you took our epi 101 class, you've probably seen the slide before, it's the same exact one. Now, the thing to understand about continuous variables is that they take on a, a basically a continuous uh, form, right? The numbers are consecutive. It might be one, two, three, four, but also often it can also like include like decimal places, fractions, 1.1, 1.11, 2.2, like that. So, and something like that is like blood pressure, right? Or birth weight. Birth weight will be maybe one child is 2,500 grams, 2,500 grams, and another child is 3,000 grams, another one is 3,050, you know, like, and, and they, the variables are like that. This, the, the understanding what the variables are, it's very key to like on knowing which statistical procedures to use in for what, um, using, no, yeah, knowing which statistical procedures you want to use. So this is very important. Now, continuous variables, it's important to also differentiate them from like discrete variables, right? So discrete variables are similar to continuous variables in the sense that they also often continue, so to speak, but they take on integer forms. So it's kind of like count. You, you cannot have, you can have like 20 patients on the ward, but you cannot have 20.5 patients on the ward, right? So it, it, these are whole numbers and their counts, or you can have maybe 600 accidents that happen today in your city, but you cannot have 600.5. This is what I'm saying. So discrete and continuous, and oftentimes there's, there are differences in how we are able to analyze the continuous versus the discrete data, and also depending on what kind of discrete variable it is. Now, we, we, we often also have categorical variables, and sometimes it is the continuous variables that we will then categorize. You know, we might be able to split the variable, the continuous variable into multiple forms, depending on whether it's large versus um, medium versus small, or we might have binary variables which are also continuous so con which are also categorical so categorical variables can either be binary might might be nominal or ordinal we'll talk about that in a moment so binary variables are two forms it could be yes or no it could be up or down right and they're often like opposites of each other or we might have more categories like underweight normal weight overweight and we're we'll, we'll going to a bit more detail about the variables so do we have any any questions? I, I see that uh, peop some people have their hands raised at this point. So Mardia, do you want to ask a question? We're waiting for you, Mardia. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Yeah, please ask the question. Yes, I said data are usually continuous or discrete, right? Yes. yes. But another set is categorical. It's all is it only continuous, discrete, or categorical? This binary, yes or no? Can it be? It's it can only be discrete, right? So binary is categorical. So let me let me let me say this again. So there are three forms that we often use, three, three forms of variables that we often use, and that is continuous, discrete, and categorical, right? But we have other variable forms, but we're not teaching those because we don't usually use those for analysis in statistics. Not, not at this level anyway, not, not, not the statistical methods that we want to teach you. The statistical methods I want to teach you in this class, these are the three form, broad formats that 
that exist that we are all going to come across continuous, discrete, and categorical. Now, um, continuous and discrete, I mentioned that the continuous variable takes a range of values and they're they're consecutive, they you know, and you can have like decimal places. But for discrete variables, you will not often have decimal places. They're whole numbers, they're integers. And I gave the example of maybe the number of patients on the world, um, you know, number of COVID patients that were diagnosed today in the country, right? But then there's a categorical variable, which is essentially categories. So first of all, it might be two categories. So if it's two categories, then that's binary, right? But if it's more than two categories, then we often just describe it as categorical, but we'll talk about more categorical variables in more detail in the next moment, okay? So Dr. Montar is, is back, and so I'm going to hand over to him so he can keep going. So we're just, he's just going to sign back in. Um, You know, so so um, while while he's getting set up, so so essentially, categorical variables can be in different forms. So there's an example that I gave where you're looking based on numbers, either binary, yes or no. Um, you know, if you're looking at biological sex, male or female, that's binary, right? It's only two forms, but it might be more than two. You might have multiple categories. Right, and, and the categories might also be different from each other in the way that, in the kind of categories that they are. And, and we'll talk about that in a moment, you know, when we get to it. And that's important to also bear in mind. So I'll hand over to you, to you now. Matayo, you're on mute. Thank you. Sorry, for some, for some reason I got locked out. Um, let's just continue. So I think we've gone through this slide. Uh, Dr. Abia, you've gone through continuous, discrete, and categorical variables, right? Yeah. And uh, so. So we're just talking about categorical variables in more detail. I think that if you advance the slide. Um, I am trying to advance the slides. Can you see my slides? We can, yes. Well, I'm trying to advance the slides, but well, I think you should take over the, I mean, this, the slides. And okay. I'll, right. Yeah, yeah. Just take over the slides. Okay, I will. Share my screen then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so essentially, um, and categorical variables can be nominal or ordinal um, data. And here's the thing: there are far more complex classifications of variables. Um, but like Dr. B mentioned earlier, the fundamental purpose, especially for an introductory course of this nature, is for you to have um, you know, the basic conceptual understanding that is necessary for you to be able to deal with some of the statistical methods that we're going to be covering in this series of courses. And so essentially for that purpose, Categorical variable can either be nominal or ordinal. And when we say nominal, nominal comes from just name, meaning that the, the categories are just names. They're just names. Um, just to show the differences, it is not, it does not convey any mathematical difference per se. So for instance, categories can be male and female. You know, so it's a male twice or half of a female. I mean. That, 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 that sounds like an absurd question. So that's what nominal variables are meant to be. You know, say Lagos, Dar es Salaam, and Paris. Those are 
you know, those are that's, that, 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 those are those are categories. Um, but they're nominal. It's just about the name. It doesn't convey any particular mathematical property per se. Um, there is no quantitative order to it. Now, when we talk about ordinal data, um, it means that these are categories, but the categories have some quantitative implication. You know, it means that it, it, there's an order to it. There's an order to it. So, um, for instance, sometimes you have, um, so look at the example, staging of HIV, for instance, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. At the very minimum, some of the, I mean, these have implications to the sense that it talks about the complexity, how, you know, how complicated the HIV disease has become or how severe it has become. Same thing with classification of, um, of body weight, from underweight to normal weight to overweight to obese. Well, we say, I mean, underweight is one, normal weight is two, overweight is three, obese is four. There's an order and that order has some quantitative implications. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, the reason why we talk about all of this is that when you come to statistical theory and statistical methods, for instance, when we use, can we use, so when, because a lot of the questions that you would get or a lot of the issues you would have to think about when you're reading papers is, given the objective of this paper, is the linear regression the appropriate thing for the authors to have used? And the inferences they are drawing from this paper, is it valid given that what they've done is a linear regression? And you'll find out that many of the things we'll talk about like linear regression, like other methods, actually depend on the kind of variable. Those methods make assumptions about whether your variable is categorical or continuous or it's nominal or ordinal. And that's the reason why we're going through the pains to understand each of these concepts. Romu? Slide? Oh, yeah. Cool. So now I think we have a poll. So you're going to have the next um, 90 seconds. Before we, sorry, before we um, go to the poll, I want to sort of understand the, so people are saying that there's a black box on the screen. Okay. Um, 